Smart Pizzas with you. In this episode, you'll see 100 mysterious and unexplainable creatures. This is a shot my subscriber sent me, maintaining that he'd taken it on his own. It's up to you if you believe it or not. However, I'm more interested in this beast with an ugly muzzle. Is it a dinosaur species that survived? Or maybe a xenomorph from the alien? Or a result of mutations? Or maybe it's an artificially created species? We need your expert opinion. The Mexican fisherman awoke and set out for another angling early in the morning. It didn't differ from any other working day. However, something unexpected awaited them that day. Nobody had ever experienced anything similar. On the beach, they found a being washed away to the shore with a human body and a fish tail that didn't show any vital signs. The shocked people called the police and medical specialists that, in their turn, passed the being to the scientists. When an artifact goes that far and even reaches the scientists, it becomes unreal to track what they do with or think about it. The only thing left is to suppose or guess in the dark. Relying on the onlookers, the mermaid found looked like a waxwork. Anyway, they're 100% sure it was real. If it happens to be the truth, these scientists can make a real breakthrough in science. Strange Skeleton the only thing that confused me in the last story was the integrity of the rests found. They were preserved perfectly. That means their authenticity may indicate that the mermaid died several days ago and not more than that. It's difficult to believe in it, of course. However, it's not true for a skeleton for the next story. It was found by some ordinary guy walking along the beach. On the shots, you can see the rests extracted from the water. He was interested in who it was. The creature found had a small skull, resembling the human one as well as the spine coming into a big tail. Yes, you're right, that skeleton must have belonged to a mermaid, but a very young one. According to the condition of the bones, it passed away considerably long ago. However, if I were that guy, I would have brought the rest to a museum. This way, I could have a chance to get money and help the science. Something unusual from the bottom. Strange findings of the fishermen are not limited to it. Now I'll show to you what a young girl caught after angling just a few times. The American woman went to the river and felt a resistance almost at once after she had put the rod in. She took all her efforts, but the creature resisted. Anyway, she managed to take it out. Well, I can't even tell who was caught. The creature didn't look like any other known to people. As the woman says, at first she thought it was just a ball of seaweed. It was only later when she noticed that it was something shapeless and strange with long tentacles. The creature didn't resemble a fish, but some sort of dangerous and horrific worm. What did the monster appear in an ordinary river for? The girl turned directly to the experts with this question. She showed them the photo and was terrified by the answer given. It turned out that the American caught a fiery worm. These creatures look really picturesque. Their body consists of many branches of the bright orange-red color. Anyway, it would be better to stay away from them. The poison of this worm can hurt for several hours, oh, yeah. cause dizziness oh. and nausea. If you just touch to its sharp bristle, the animal sets its needles to you and makes it impossible to get rid of unpleasant sensations, at least for several weeks. The thing is that the bristle of this creature is a powerful neurotoxin, penetrating the human skin and causing the spot to burn. The animal does usually not come into contact with people. Anyway, if a diver or some other random person is not lucky enough to encounter it, the one will remember this meeting for a long time. Fortunately, the girl didn't touch it. How is it possible not to mention about our favorite Australia in the edition dedicated to surprising creatures, right? If it weren't for there, where else would fishermen and other people meet anybody unusual or strange? This story happened to a 47-year-old man named Joe. He was walking along the beach and happened to notice a piece of plastic under his foot. What's the outrage? Who left it here? Joe thought to himself and wanted to throw it in the trash. Except for what happened next scared him a lot. This very piece began to run away from the man. He, of course, caught up with it wiped his glasses and then pulled out his camera. It turned out he didn't have hallucinations and that plastic was a living thing. 
According to the video author's assumption, it was some kind of rare crustacean, but what kind remained a mystery. Neither Joe himself, nor his acquaintances, nor people from the comments explained who it really was. So if any of you knows the answer to the question, write us in the comments. Mysterious Fish a guy named Connor runs his social nets with an idea of daily videos related to his catch from seas, rivers, and lakes. He's managed to catch absolutely anybody for several years of his activity. There were sharks, dangerous jellyfish, rare squid, and octopus. In general, you could collect a whole oceanarium. However, the most attention was deservedly attracted by a simple fish he caught one summer. As soon as it was captured by the camera lens and then posted in the net, people nicknamed it a toothfish and began to discuss its dentist who did his job very well. It's worth coming into contact with a dentist of this kind. Seriously, all the comments under the author's video were flooded with admiration for its teeth. People got so caught up with exactly that and forgot to find out who the fish was. I looked up the similarities online and thought it might be a parrotfish. The one got its name because of the teeth resembling the beak of a bird. This jaw helps the sea creature to easily chew corals and other hard food. The reason is that its teeth are made of fluoropatite that's one of the strongest biominerals in the world. Dangerous Fishing We come back to Australia again. Once more, we have a spine-tingling story for you. This time it happened to two fishermen who went to one of the main local beaches. Before fishing, they performed their special ritual, took a swim in the water, and had a good time. The guys then armed themselves with fishing rods, went away from the general public, and cast out their tackles. Since they angled from the shore, where still many people were swimming, they couldn't count on a big catch. As it turned out, very much in vain. One of the friends says that suddenly he noticed his partner got stuck in the sand with all his strength, resisting someone huge. Realizing the seriousness of what was happening, he ran up to him and began to help. Only by joint efforts, people managed to pull closer to the shore this monster, which turned out to be a great white shark. We can only wonder what it was doing in the shallow water, but it was really the shark. See for yourself. The guys immediately looked at each other and quickly let it go. As they say, this species was protected by the local authorities, so they didn't plan to break the law. But you and I know that the guys released the white shark to stay safe and sound. We can only hope that the shark swam back to its depths and wouldn't hunt so close to the beach again. Now, I don't even know what fishing trip is the most dangerous. The one in the last video with the great white shark, or this one, during which a large alligator appeared a few meters away from a fisherman and laid its eyes on him. The blogger from the USA immediately started to move away, but not to run so that the predator didn't start to catch up with him. The alligator followed the trail for a few meters, stopped, and after losing interest, returned back to its native water. Apparently, the predator didn't like the fact that someone was angling fish and other creatures within its territory. It supposed it was the only one who could search for prey there. I hope that the fisherman didn't try his luck again and just left the place safely. After all, another time the predator may try to attack somebody not head-on but stealthily without leaving a single chance to escape for the victim. Fisher's Dream You know, fishing is actually a lot more dangerous than it may seem. The past videos have proven that, well, wouldn't it be great if fish jumped onto your boat or bucket on its own without much time and effort? Although, wait a minute, that's exactly what happened in Taiwan in 2018. The author of the video boarded his boat to go fishing early in the morning. All of a sudden, everything around him turned into chaos. The surrounding fishes behaved as if the sea had become a boiling pot. They were jumping on board. All what was left was to stack them up neatly. But don't worry, there was no dark magic or any other witchery. Scientists have an explanation to this phenomenon. They said that in all likelihood, this bright behavior of sardines was caused by the approach of barracudas predatory fish known for their insidiousness in attacking schools of small creatures. Fireflies If any of you happens to be in the wildlife where you can go fishing, I strongly recommend to do so only during daylight. As soothing and relaxing as it may seem at night, it's incredibly dangerous, and now you'll see why. A resident of Australia decided to go fishing at night. 
He was sure that at this moment the fishes were quite calm and would bite perfectly. Wishing to capture this moment, he took out his camera and started filming everything around him. Look at this, it's really heavenly around. It's dark, you can't see anything but pretty fireflies. It's fantastic, isn't it? You're quite right. Anyway, only if you consider that those were not fireflies at all, but hungry crocodiles with glowing eyes. Write in the comments, how many predators you counted there? Loch Ness Monster Hunting for the Loch Ness Monster, or as it's also called, Nessie, is a favorite pastime of most tourists find themselves near to the Scottish Lake Loch Ness. Biologists are skeptical of stories about Nessie, whereas the owners of local hotels and campgrounds are very interested in maintaining the image of the monster. What's more, the publicity seekers are always happy to hype on the subject of the Loch Ness Monster. They show this or that footage, allegedly showing a strange creature, or talk about how they personally saw the legendary creature. In most cases, such stories are an obvious fake in fiction. However, what made headlines on a major news channel in the early fall of 2023 was truly shocking. There, people captured the top of Nessie as if picking out of the water and watching what was happening outside. They say that these pictures were taken back in 2018. At the same time, the author decided to make them public only now. The girl who captured all that says all this time she was afraid people would laugh at her. She was inspired to disclose that by a pensioner who had devoted 30 years to search for the Loch Ness Monster. She shared with him her opinion about Nessie in the net, and that's when the photos popped up. In the end, everyone was satisfied. The opponents of the theory of Nessie's existence have a new reason for jokes and revelations, and its supporters another argument in favor of the existence of the legendary monster. It's not obligatory to be a mysterious monster to attract attention. Some sea creatures do it in another way. They attack and frighten people in the ocean. Now it's my turn. How do you feel about surfing? Something tells me that most of you have seen the process but have never tried it for yourself. Well, if that's the case, think twice about where you should start learning it. I wouldn't choose open areas like seas or oceans because there, at any moment, brazen squids can steal the board from you. This one, for example, grabbed the board and forced the man to jump off it. Apparently, the underwater inhabitant really wanted to try to surf personally, and the man still didn't give it a place. By the way, if you didn't know, you should never joke with these creatures. At the base of their tentacles, there's an oral apparatus. With the power of its jaws, the creature can crush the skull of any large fish. Squids are naturally predatory creatures, and they feed on any living organisms smaller than them. Even relatives are among them. But let's get back to our brazen squid. In fact, the story was a little different. This animal was injured, and so it was asking people for help. Surfers quickly realized this and dragged the poor thing to the shore, where they called for help and managed to provide the necessary support. You can imagine how desperate the squid was that it dared to ask for help from some humanoids it didn't know at all. It's an amazing story. The next creature humans encountered is no less astounding. The genus Homo, to which we belong, appeared about two and a half million years ago. That seems like quite a long time, but by global standards, it's absolutely nothing. Even the blunt-nosed six-gill shark that swims in our waters today has been around for over 60 million years. Their closest ancestors are found in mineral deposits that are over 200 million years old. Over such a long period of time, this creature has not only adapted to the environment, but also learned to grow to gigantic size. They grow to almost 16 feet in length and can weigh over 1,100 pounds. These sharks are viviparous, and females are capable of carrying up to 80 babies at a time. They mainly feed on carrion, but can also attack living creatures if there's any chance. We can only hope that they never get the chance, because this video, in which people are behind glass, and look at the shark in wide-eyed astonishment, make it clear that a person will have little chance of survival. Remember the story about the alligator and the kayak? It turns out that traveling in the wild cannot always be negative. Sometimes the situation can be much nicer, more pleasant, and safer for life. The sailor in this story was out for a trip, sailed far enough from shore, when suddenly his boat shook. He thought something was wrong, but it was much simpler than that. 
Turning around, the man noticed that his peace had been disturbed by the very cute seal. The big creature climbed up the aft and froze, as if waiting for the man to sail a certain distance and drop the animal off at the desired point. Seems to me that if any animal should quietly sneak up on people from behind, it should be them, cute seals. Just when I remembered about that aggressive alligator from the river that tried to overturn the tourist kayak, we came across another story featuring these toothy predators. Crocodiles, once again, do not wish anyone well, but try to attack and get on the boat. What's funny, in this story, the crocodile jumped on a rather tall boat, and I didn't even have time to realize how it managed to do it. I thought they had a great horizontal leap, but as you can see, they can jump up perfectly as well. I wonder how the man on board then chased the predator away. With a stick? Or with his bare hands? Have you ever imagined hybrids of different animals? For example, those of a turtle and a giraffe. Sounds crazy, but the scientists consider in another way. Giraffes Artificial intelligence is a subject that's become topical not so long ago and is clearly not going to stop being so. Everyone is interested in what a machine can do, how fast it counts, what decisions it makes in crisis situations, well, or how it portrays animals that haven't been created yet. What do I mean? Scientists are constantly working to breed new species of creatures that would be the most efficient and useful, for example, in farming. However, seeing the end result is not an easy thing to do. How can humans guess the appearance of a creature with only DNA data in front of them? That's right, it's an impossible task for us humans, but artificial intelligence can do it. Scientists are planning to create a so-called giraffus. It's a hybrid between a giraffe and a tortoise. From the giraffe, the creature will take a very strong neck, high speed of movement, and top combat skills. The tortoise will give the hybrid a very strong shell and compact size, thanks to which it will be possible to hide in low grass. I agree the idea is quite contradictory, and at first glance it will not bring any benefits, but who knows? Perhaps the researchers have their own motives for this. Bear Owl The next creature in the scientist pipeline is called a bear owl, which is a hybrid between a bear and an owl. It takes its awesome fighting skills from the former, I'm talking about long and sharp claws, muscular limbs, and the will to win crossed with fearlessness. Owls, on the other hand, have given the bear owl silence and pleasant plumage, allowing it to camouflage itself in the forest. Along with this, the ground predator will also possess keen eyesight, which will help it hunt absolutely any prey. It seems to me that even animals will fall for the cute appearance of this hybrid, for which they will instantly pay with their lives. The night hunter will forgive no one. AI showed another interesting result on the future appearance of hybrids on the subject of the deer guar. Usually deer are prey for jaguars and all other wild cats in general, but here, for some reason, people thought to start crossbreeding them. To be honest, I don't really understand the point of this crossbreeding, so feel free to tell me about it in the comments. Still, the only interesting thing about it is the appearance. The jaguar, along with the deer, gets an incredibly cute face, which is also equipped with strong antlers. As a result, this incredibly fast beast will cause trouble for anyone which lets their guard down even for a moment. Alifagal Well, here's one more option of what hybrids of incompatible animals would look like. This time, artificial intelligence decided to please people with a mixture between an elephant and an eagle. The eagle is a predator that knows its worth. It'll never waste time. At the same time, this bird is incredibly strong and almost invincible in the sky. It's strange that scientists decided to bring it down to land, although the body of the elephant, no less powerful creature, is a worthy substitute for it. The only thing I don't understand is the idea of wings. I venture to suggest that wings, instead of ears, are the weapon with which an elephagal would throw away wild cats jumping on their neck. By that logic, this animal may have no weaknesses at all. It's fast, hardy, has very powerful leg kick, an agile and powerful trunk, and always ready wings in place of ears. I don't know if it's good or bad, but so far the development of all these unusual animals is in process. Well, next you'll learn about already existing hybrid animals that'll surprise you no less. And first of all, I'll tell you about the Liger. 
a hybrid between a lion and a tigress. People often argue about which animal is stronger, the lion or the tiger. One is always living in prides and standing up for its brothers, while the other is a real lone hunter that's mastered tactical fighting techniques to perfection. I think we'll never come to a definite conclusion, so let's consider the liger to be the main predator of the planet. It combined the best qualities of one and the other, becoming the largest representative of the Felidae family at the present time. It can weigh more than 880 pounds, and its standard height is about 3.2 feet. Stretching out to its full length, the liger can occupy 13 feet or even more. This giant eats meat, and the more of it, the better. Such a big creature needs up to 44 pounds of food per day, and yes, finding the food won't be a problem for them. Inheriting social qualities from lions, ligers can easily join any pride or small group of cats where it becomes much easier for them to find food. Even low temperatures are not a stumbling block for these creatures. From tigers, they have acquired a fur with a dense undercoat, which makes them almost impervious to the cold. In severe frosts, ligers are happy to lie in the snow, and in the heat of the day, they relax in the water. Africanized Killer Bee But it's not just terrestrial predators that these smart scientists are thinking about. Sometimes they come up with ways to improve the already dangerous bee. The Africanized bee, or the killer bee, is a full-fledged hybrid of the African bee and the European bee, created in 1956 by geneticist Warwick Kerr. The man, together with his colleagues, wanted to create a breed of bees that would be able to endure the hot Brazilian climate and at the same time actively reproduce. As a basis, the doctor took the African bee, which is known for its physical stability and high fertility, but didn't take into account one thing the fact that at the same time it's much more aggressive and has incredibly toxic venom. Realizing that all this could lead to sad consequences for the environment, the lab technicians dared to stop their experiment and abandon all the work, but it was too late. As it usually happens, ironically, a few individuals broke free. The queen bees of the new hybrid began to actively crossbreed with local male bees and spread throughout Brazil. Also, these creatures are actively driving out other relatives and moving to the north of the American continent at a speed of 168 miles per year. It turned out that all these creatures are even more aggressive than scientists thought. If someone suddenly finds themselves 16 feet from their hive, no matter how big or toothy the enemy is, they're going to be hurt. Not only on the ground and in the air on our planet today are there unique hybrid animals, for the sake of interest, it's worth looking underwater, because there you can find a fully autonomous biohybrid model resembling a fish. It can swim under the influence of electrical impulses, coordinating the movements of its body and tail fin and creating a push in the water. To do this, scientists grouped cardiomyocytes from two different sides of the fin of the model. These are the muscle cells responsible for heart contractions. The contractions of one side caused a stretching of the other, then the mechanical sensitive proteins activated by the stretching triggered a constant closed motion. The fish swam with a rhythm similar to a heartbeat. In total, during the experiment, it made 38 million pushes. What's the point of this? Personally, I have no idea. Probably people want to study the heart and its rhythmic processes by such an unusual method. If it's so, I would already show my respect to them for the idea alone, but they even managed to realize it quite successfully. Everything that concerns cardiovascular research is never useless. Zippy That's what I would call the following underwater creature, even though it's essentially a catfish. Of course, I would not add an ordinary fish here, so I'll go straight to its essence. The fact is that researchers from the USA were able to increase the survival rate of the well-known fish by as much as 400%. And they did it very cleverly, cunningly and easily, by introducing an antimicrobial alligator gene into the catfish genome, which prevents bacteria and other filth from getting inside the catfish's body. The resulting hybrid turned out to be very resistant to infections and at the same time completely sterile, that is, not capable of reproduction. By adjusting the DNA of aquatic inhabitants, scientists not only deprived the test subjects of their ability to reproduce, but at the same time increased their life cycle by about four times. 
In addition, the complete sterility of the process guarantees that all this will not affect the environment in any way. The debate between people about which bear is stronger never ends. Some people believe the researchers and say that the brown bear has no equal. Others either want to stand out from the crowd or seriously believe that the polar bear is not only not weaker but also more powerful than the brown bear. In general, it's impossible to understand these disputes. Wanting to resolve them once and for all, breeders took a bold step and combined the two main brawlers of the bear world. This is a hybrid of a polar bear and a brown bear, which is called a pizzly or a growler. If growler bears could talk, I suppose their first question would be as follows. Am I some kind of joke to you? Could you have given me a better name? And I completely agree with them on that. They could have come up with something more interesting for such a brutal beast, but that's not the point. The main thing is that it proves its strength in practice. This bear is the embodiment of power. It's moderately aggressive, and what people from different corners of Earth especially like, it's a ray of hope in terms of saving the gene pool of polar bears. In the past, there was a risk that global warming might at one point wipe them out. But this problem is now gradually being solved, as the growler bear is adapted to higher temperatures. Let's look at rare African animals. What is that? Animals in Africa, however strange they may be, are known to science and many explorers in general. But this one creature, discovered by travelers, has set a whole world on edge. What do you think it is? That's right, I have no idea either. On the one hand, this monster reminds me of a dog. On the other hand, it looks like an ancient dragon breathing flames. It even seems that it's not something earthly at all and came to us from somewhere from another planet. What version do you like better? And do you think that this find was really discovered? Share your thoughts in the comments. It'll be interesting to read. Okapi But this creature is much more real and it doesn't raise any questions. Although I was wrong saying about questions actually, the okapi is a species of ungulates, the only representative of its genus from the Giraffidae family. In fact, it's an African unicorn, which simultaneously resembles a horse, a giraffe, and a zebra. Such a miracle of nature usually weighs no more than 550 pounds, and its body length is 6.5 feet. The okapi is closest to giraffes, but you'll not see any long neck in it. The fact is that nature has considered that there is simply no need for it. This mutant is found deep in the rainforest of the Congo and eats mainly bushy vegetation along with leaves of stunted trees. But what Mother Nature didn't save on was the length of its tongue. In the Okapi, it can reach more than 16 inches. There are some of the few creatures that can lick not only their nose but even their own eyes with their tongue if they want to. And now imagine that all this news is not heard by us, people from the 21st century, but by scientists from the 1900s who thought they knew everything about nature. But then this miracle appeared in front of them. To say that the researchers were scared is an understatement. Fennec Remember this combination of six letters, because from now on it will become for you one of the most pleasant and sweet in memory. The fennec is an inhabitant of the harsh deserts of North Africa that feels great there, despite its small size and cute appearance. In relation to the size of the head, the ears of this animal are the largest among predators. And these are not just ears, but full-fledged radiators, which give heat into the atmosphere and thus cool their owner. At the same time, the fennec weighs only about 2.2 pounds. What is this if not another example of the fact that you should never underestimate a creature because of its appearance? The beautiful ears of the world's smallest fox, in addition to being heat exchangers, also help its owner to listen to the quietest sounds in the surroundings. The fennec can even hear things underground. Knowing where a desert bird is silently strolling or where a sand lizard is going to emerge from any minute, the fox hunts easily and gets its food successfully. In addition to great hearing, this animal is also able to jump more than 27 and a half inches high and almost 5 feet long. And I remind you, his dimensions are quite modest. In addition to having a close-knit family, fennec foxes also join together in large social groups. The foxes enjoy each other's company. Animals play and have fun together like little kids. These foxes have perfectly adapted to the conditions of life in the desert. 
But today, it's increasingly possible to encounter Fennec in a private house or even in a city apartment, which I'm not even surprised at all. The next African creature that scientists have discovered is the elephant shrew. These are mammals from the family of, guess which one? That's right, from the elephant shrew family. They have a large head, a trunk-shaped elongated nose, as well as slender limbs and a long tail. The animals run fast and jump high. In fact, if a person knows nature badly, they can confuse this unique creature with an ordinary jerboa from afar. Why not? It also has elongated rounded ears, expressive beady eyes, and thin but strong legs. By the way, the animals use the latter very actively. It's not for nothing that they're also called jumping shrews. It's a good thing, at least, that people didn't start to attribute these shrews to mice, but their lifestyle is very similar to them. And this, despite the fact that there are no rodent genes in the blood of jumping shrews. They're constantly digging somewhere, walking only where they paved the way before, and also hiding in burrows. Interestingly, along with this, elephant shrews are also considered real predators. A convenient and sophisticated trunk helps them in hunting. Their potential prey is usually insects, spiders, or termites. Elephant shrews use a movable trunk stuffed with sensitive vibrasi. This flexible appendage, like a locator, detects a suitable target, after which it immediately goes into the mouth. Lesser Bush Baby I would call these primates another dose of cuteness from Africa. Speaking of this continent, lesser bush babies are considered to be one of the most numerous primates there. Yes, they're the most numerous and we still don't know anything about them, but that's okay. One scientist encountered these amazing creatures for the first time, which immediately formed in their head dozens if not hundreds of questions. Moreover, I would really like to look at the face of the scientists of bygone years because they definitely discovered the lesser bush baby somewhere at night. You won't find these mischievous primates during the day. These furry friends are also known for making everything and everyone wet. Urine therapy is the ideology of these little primates. They irrigate themselves and their females with their liquid secretions. Of course, their territory is also hit with such napalm. They also often wet their own legs. And since their secretions retain the smell for a long time, it means that everything they touch is considered their native place from the same second. Thus, they mark their territory. However, don't think this is a sloppy animal, which is disgusting to touch. It's quite the opposite. They have a nursing claw on their front legs. It replaces a comb and helps the primates groom their hair. Besides, they have their own toothbrush under their tongue. The cartilaginous comb helps them clean off any food debris from their teeth that may have gotten stuck during dinner. Shoebill. And this is one of the most unusual storks I've ever seen. All right, let's be correct though. The shoebill used to be classified as a stork because of its general body shape. Genetically, however, it's similar to pelicans and herons. Again, it's even hard to imagine exactly how scientists reacted to this creature when they saw it for the first time. After all, this four foot tall bird simply has a gigantic and one of a kind beak. Not surprisingly, it's the first thing that catches the eye at all. The beak can exceed 8 inches in length, and its width is often equal to that of the shoebill itself. With this thing, the bird deftly catches fish, amphibians, snakes, and even small crocodiles. People mockingly compare the bird's beak to a wooden shoe, hence the name of the bird. However, this shoe can break the shell of a turtle. So that skull of jokers, if the birds find out about it, will crack without difficulty. But it's not likely they'll ever hear the joke. No one will ever tell it to them. Shoebills usually live alone. They choose to live alone because it's much easier to camouflage in tall grass. Because of this, shoebills can sometimes stand motionless for hours to hunt successfully. It's time for mysticism. And first of all, I want to tell you about Kangamato. Kangamato is a legendary creature or cryptid that, according to local lore, lives in South Africa especially in the Mabongo region of Zambia. Kangamato is described as a large bird or flying reptile with bat-like wings and sharp teeth. It's often compared to such ancient lizards as pterodactyls. There are several witness accounts of Kangamato encounters. Eyewitnesses claim that the creature attacks cattle and sometimes it even attacks people. 
Some claim to have seen Kangamato leaving caves or flying over rivers and lakes. However, I was most impressed with this video in which a certain bird in Africa flies over the blue sky nonchalantly. The video was repeatedly checked for editing, but they couldn't find any traces of editing. There are two versions here. According to one, this is some kind of dinosaur that survived to this day. According to another, we see Kangamato, the legendary creature. I don't even know which of these is better. Makala Mbembe is another legendary cryptid that, according to stories and local lore, lives in the wilds of Central Africa, especially in the Congo River region. Descriptions of Makelo Mbembe vary, but it's generally believed to be a huge creature like a dinosaur or a dragon, with a long neck, large torso, and strong hind legs. Locals claim that Makelo Mbembe can reach a length of 50 feet and have a skin covered with very solid scales. What's interesting is that there are a number of eyewitness reports of encounters with this monster, and they all seem quite plausible. Eyewitnesses claim to have seen it in the water as it crosses rivers or floats to the surface while emitting a kind of roar. From mythical creatures, let's move on to real monsters that actually existed on our planet. Over tens and hundreds of millions of years, a great number of dangerous creatures have lived in the ocean, but hardly any of them could compete with Megalodon, the most famous prehistoric shark as well as the most dangerous and aggressive shark of all time. Megalodon could grow up to 66 feet long and weigh almost 50 tons. Modern predatory sharks are not even close to such a monster. For example, great white sharks rarely exceed 20 to 23 feet in length and weigh about 1 to 2 tons. In addition to incredible size, Megalodons had incredible teeth. It's for this that the shark got its name, which in Greek means big tooth. The megalodon teeth reached about 8 inches in length. That's one of the most significant figures of all time. 276 such teeth, arranged in five rows, combined with the shark's huge size, its heightened predatory instincts and fierce aggression, made megalodon a real monster, which could now easily deal with any other predatory shark. Speaking of them, there are plenty of creepy monsters in the ocean these days, too and the bull shark stands out among them. Most likely, Megalodon would finish it off, but the bull shark could try to fight back. In addition, this shark is not inferior to Megalodon in everything. Unlike the prehistoric monster, the bull shark can swim in fresh water, so it can be seen in many rivers. Megalodon would be proud of its distant descendant because the bull shark is also aggression and power in the flesh. Echinoderms and crustaceans, rays and dolphins, sea turtles and sea snakes and, of course, humans, this predator doesn't care who's in its path, it'll kill anyone. Only orcas, because they're superior in size, and humans, if we're talking about hunting and fishing, can fight back the bull shark. Any other creature will fall prey and be eaten by the ruthless predator. Varambe Dangerous and large creatures are found not only in the sea, although there are usually more of them in the water. There are some creepy creatures on land as well. It's a good thing that some of them are already extinct, like Varambe. Just imagine if this bird still inhabited the planet. Scientists believe that Varambe were the heaviest and largest birds of all time, which automatically makes them very dangerous. Modern ostriches would seem tiny compared to them, because Varambe grew up to 10 feet in length and weighed up to 1,760 pounds. The largest were representatives of the Varambe Titan species. Because of their enormous size, Varambe were unable to fly, so they wandered through the fields and forests of Madagascar. Zoologists have made 3D models of the brain of these birds and found that Varambe could not see well and led a nocturnal lifestyle, dwelling mostly in dark forests. They apparently fed on fruit, seeds, leaves, and insects, so they cannot be called the most dangerous birds in history. But the following feathered creatures can be… Terror birds. Yeah, that's their name. They also have another name, Forish Hasidae. They lived long before Varambe. They went extinct about 2 million years ago, but if these overgrown birds had coexisted together, Madagascar's birds would have a hard time. Terror birds would have quickly killed them before they were huge and frightening predators. Terror birds reached up to 10 feet in height, had a long neck, a powerful beak, and sharp claws. Despite their enormous size, terror birds were capable of speeding up to 30 miles per hour. Paleontologists believe that the terror birds first caught up with their prey 
wounded it with their claws on their feet, and then delivered a fatal blow to the head with their beak. When hunting large prey, terror birds attacked it with their claws and beak and hit its vital organs. If we compare terror birds to the modern dangerous birds such as golden eagles, peregrine falcons, and bald eagles, the modern birds are inferior to the terrible birds. They don't stand a chance in a fight with the prehistoric giants. The only thing they could count on was to retreat from the battlefield and escape from the fast terror bird. Since I'm talking about extreme antiquity, why not take a look at dinosaurs? By default, we think of these lizards as some of the most dangerous creatures of all time, but no two dinosaurs were alike. Some were quite harmless and small, while others were real monsters. And the most dangerous of them was not the notorious Tyrannosaurus, but Giganotosaurus. The 43-foot-long predatory lizard, weighing in at about 8 tons, held the inhabitants of the Cretaceous period in the history of modern Argentina at bay. It didn't eat Tyrannosaurus, T. rex simply lived much later, but if they had coexisted, Tyrannosaurus would have regularly fallen prey to Giganotosaurus. This makes sense because if Giganotosaurus could even kill 98-feet-long Titanosaur, then 39-foot-long T. rex would be an easy meal for it. But even such a super predator as Giganotosaurus can be dealt with. For example, Dinosuchus could do it. It was a huge and very dangerous crocodile, but it lived later, 80 to 73 million years ago. If Dinosuchus lived at the same time as Giganotosaurus, it wouldn't have given it any peace because this gigantic crocodile easily hunted even the largest dinosaurs. In this, it was helped by two factors. First, Dinosuchus was a colossal crocodile. It grew up to 40 feet in length and weighed over 8 tons. Secondly, scientists believe that it was Dinosuchus that had the greatest bite force of any animal in history. It exceeds 356,000 newtons. For comparison, in Tyrannosaurus, this indicator is about 10 times less. And in Megalodon, it's three times less. Not surprisingly, Dinosuchus could bite through even the thickest shells and most protected scales and skin of its rivals. Its distant descendant, the modern saltwater crocodile, which is considered the most biting creature at the moment, looks like a toothless toddler in comparison with the monstrous Dinosuchus. Speaking of the saltwater crocodile, scientists believe that it's now not only the owner of the most powerful bite among animals, but also the largest terrestrial predator. This title is often assigned to another dangerous giant, the polar bear. Whereas saltwater crocodiles grow up to 17, 20, or even 23 feet in length, polar bears rarely exceed 10 feet in length and usually weigh up to 1,760 pounds. But even that's more than enough to be the most dangerous creature in the entire Arctic. Scientists believe that polar bears are the only bears that see humans as prey. While brown bears and black bears may not notice a human nearby, Polar bears are more likely to attack. They're also dangerous for the inhabitants of the Arctic, which they hunt. Common seals, eared seals, hares, moose, musk oxen, and even walruses, the polar bear is able to deal with any of them. This creature is very powerful. Saw-scaled viper. When it comes to dangerous snakes, we usually think of the black mamba, the rattlesnake, or the king cobra. But scientists believe that the saw-scaled viper is more dangerous than all of them. It may not be as fast as the black mamba, not as big as the king cobra, and not the most venomous in the world, but it is the deadliest one. According to statistics, it's from the bites of saw-scaled vipers that the most people in the world die every year. When encountering a human, the saw-scaled viper makes its presence felt with a loud rustling sound, which it makes by rubbing its jagged rings. If the person doesn't leave, the saw-scaled viper attacks. The bite is extremely painful and in most cases is fatal. Its venom contains extremely powerful toxins, which have a specific effect on the entire blood-forming process in the human body. They cause a very dramatic decrease in the level of fibrinogen, the protein that's responsible for the clotting rate, which means that the victim simply can't stop bleeding. Sea wasp. Let's go back to the sea for a while. Nowadays, you can't find a creepy megalodon or dinosuchus lurking near the shore, but you can come across a sea wasp. This is not some special insect, as you might think, but a beautiful jellyfish. But don't let this beauty fool you, because the sea wasp belongs to the box jellyfish class, which is extremely venomous. Experts believe that the sea wasp is the most dangerous box jellyfish of all. Its tentacles are covered with stinging cells, which contain one of the most powerful venoms on the planet. 
The toxin is enough to kill 60 people in just three minutes. An encounter with even one sea wasp can be fatal. And if a person or other creature finds themselves in a group of these venomous monsters, there's no chance for survival. Contact with the tentacles simultaneously affects the nervous system, heart, and skin. Because of this, death after a sea wasp burn can occur more quickly than after a bite from a highly venomous snake, spider, or scorpion. Death Stalker Speaking of scorpions, the bigger the scorpion, the safer it is. And this is proved by the final animal of this episode, the Palestine Yellow Scorpion. It's between one and four and a half inches in length. Not much, right? But this little guy is called the Death Stalker, and this is alarming. The fact is that this particular arthropod is often called the deadliest scorpion on the planet and one of the most dangerous creatures. It's even listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the most venomous scorpion in the world. The Death Stalker is widespread in North Africa, Turkey, and the Arabian Peninsula, where it can be seen in crevices and dry areas. Because of the terrain and coloration of the Palestine Yellow Scorpion, it can be overlooked and accidentally stepped on. In this case, it stings very painfully. Ah! Ah, geez, yeah, he got me. And the consequences can be devastating. From anaphylactic shock to pulmonary edema and death, the Death Stalker has no trouble with animals, especially small ones. Fortunately, humans are more difficult to kill, but it's possible, so it's definitely not worth messing with. Inexplicable remnants of animals follow next. Did an angel descend from heaven? And the first thing I'd like to show you is this interesting shot of two archaeologists sitting next to something truly incredible. Next to them is either the skeleton of some mystical creature or the remains of a real angel. At the same time, the creature has a human skull and giant wings, as well as apparently only two legs. It remains to be seen whether this monster is real, but for some reason, I think it could very well be a fake, even though the pictures look quite plausible. Anyway, what do you think about it? Share your thoughts in the comments. It'll be interesting to read. Hobbits Among Us Despite the fact that most of us deep down believe that hobbits are just fictional creatures that can be seen only in the Lord of the Rings, scientists make discoveries that are very hard to believe. They're hard to believe, but it's necessary to believe because in September 2003, while studying the history of human migration from Asia to Australia, a group of archaeologists made an unexpected discovery. In the Langbua cave, they found a nearly complete skeleton of a stunted hominid. It was just over three feet tall. In the following months, the remains of seven other similar individuals were discovered. Their ages ranged from 38,000 to 12,000 years old. Of course, no one immediately began to squeal with joy as if they'd discovered something incredible. After all, it could be the skeletons of ordinary people who suffered from some disease. However, after analyzing, it became clear with a high degree of probability that these were the skeletons of another species of humans, the Flores man species. They could have appeared on Earth more than 50,000 years ago, just before Homo sapiens. And moreover, they could live with Homo sapiens in the same time interval, hiding in the forests of the island of Flores. While people from one part of the world discover the remains of some hobbit, others, on the contrary, take a broader view and find skeletons of a 16-foot-tall giant in a Thailand cave. It happened in 2007 when a group of researchers during another expedition accidentally stumbled upon mysterious footprints. What's interesting, this place for excavation was chosen for a reason. Locals said that they personally saw giants there and that scientists should dig in this direction, literally. And so they did. About 230 feet from the entrance, the cave roof noticeably widened, turning into a hall. It was here that the researchers dug up the first documented skeleton of a giant in Thailand. Science, of course, is against such finds. For example, in Armenia, they found a skeleton that was 11.4 feet long and more than 1.2 million years old. Well, guess what? Scientists mistook it for a lemur, even considering the fact that the animal doesn't have human feet, which the skeleton had on the contrary. Let's get back to our find. It was much larger than any other analogs from nearby cities and countries. But the most amazing thing was that the scientists managed to determine the exact cause of the creature's demise. A large snake was wrapped around the giant skeleton. More precisely, only its bony remains left. 
Researchers point out that a sharp stone is stabbed in the skull of the reptile. That is, the giant, being bitten by the snake, managed to inflict a fatal wound on the reptile, but obviously he himself died from the venom. The age of the remains is about 10 to 15,000 years, which suggests that in the past, the planet could really be inhabited by giants. A new creature. In general, you know, the list of inhabitants of the past is something incredible. And I'm not talking about people, but about unusual animals that ran around the planet in those times. One of them was this reptile, which remains were found by paleontologists. The discovery took place in Madagascar. The crazy beast found was the size of a cat and lived on Earth about 70 to 60 million years ago. Interestingly, the beast belongs to a mysterious group of mammals from the late Mesozoic era, the so-called Gonwenetheria. Before that, only a single skull and a few teeth and jaw fragments were known to science. But in this case, the researchers had a whole, perfectly preserved skeleton at their disposal. It's not clear whether it's good or bad. After studying it at least a little, it'll become clear that it violates almost all generally accepted standards of evolution. For example, it has more holes in its skull than any known mammal. This probably increased the sensitivity of its muzzle and vibrissae, allowing more blood vessels to pass through the skull. And it also had very strange teeth, each of which was turned inward. A similar principle is found in modern snakes. But in rodents, this is something new and incomprehensible. Kraken I think that the next guest of the episode needs no introduction. After all, it's the Kraken, a giant monster of the depths, a representative of the species of which, judging by chronicles and legends, there were only two. The ocean was simply not ready to feed more of these giants. Whales became dinner for the legendary predator. People who sailed were mistaken by the Kraken for the desired large animals, and that's why the monster attacked the ships. It stuck to them with its tentacles and pulled them to the bottom with all its strength. Up until the 19th century, people especially often mentioned the Kraken. They said that they'd seen a huge octopus in person or somewhere in the distance. But then all these stories, as one, sank into oblivion. What could have happened to make one of the ocean's top predators vaporize at the snap of a finger? Unfortunately, there's no answer to this question. And personally, for example, I don't believe that the Kraken could completely disappear from the face of the Earth. Probably it's still swimming somewhere, only even deeper. By the way, here's one of the latest finds which is worth your attention. In 2011, researchers from the United States found fossil remains of Ichthyosaurus, a predatory marine reptile up to 66 feet long. And everything would be fine except that, as the analysis showed, at the moment of death, it collapsed to the bottom like a stone and instantly died. But who could deal with a 66-foot-long predator so easily? Take a look here. See these sucker marks from the tentacles? This is probably the work of the Kraken. That's why I believe even less in the option that such a majestic creature simply disappeared from the face of the Earth and doesn't swim anywhere today. Dragon Dragons are far more mysterious creatures than the Kraken. The existence of a giant squid is believable. It all sounds quite logical. But a dragon flying overhead? Maybe it can shoot with fire? Okay. It's funny for me, but people from China aren't laughing. A man from Zhangjiakou County once stumbled upon a very strange skeleton that looked nothing like any of the animals known to this world. By the way, the fact that the skeleton had no wings at all didn't confuse the man. After all, his people, unlike Westerners, believe in dragons without wings, those that fly through the sky wriggling their bodies. But don't rush to believe in the fairy tale. There's still no official or scientific confirmation that the mysterious find is indeed the skeleton of a fairy tale monster. It's likely that it was an imitation of a dragon, which they decided to pass off as a real find. In general, write in the comments, what do you think about this? Mysterious Creature The chupacabra is a legendary creature said to live in Latin America and attacks animals by sucking their blood. 
There are many versions of the creature's appearance, but it most often described as a hybrid between a cat, a bat, a dog, and a lizard with jagged teeth and sharp claws. The appearance of the chupacabra was spotted in 1995 in Puerto Rico when the bodies of several animals were found with puncture marks on their necks and dehydrated bodies. Since then, similar incidents have occurred in Latin America, and at this time it's still unknown what's actually behind the attacks. Although the presence of the chupacabra has not been confirmed by scientific studies or pictures, people continue to search for this legendary monster in forests and mountains. It's another such study from Paraguay that's raised a number of questions. Take a look at what was found here. Doesn't this body look like the chupacabra of legends and writings? What do you think? Alien I don't even know what's better, finding traces of the mystical chupacabra or witnessing an alien event. In the USA, in her own garden, an ordinary woman came across such an interesting body. As befits a frightened person, she armed herself with a camera, took a couple or three pictures and posted them on the internet in the hope that someone she knew would give her a reasonable explanation. However, no reasonable response followed. People, on the contrary, planted even more doubts in her mind. After such footage, you begin to believe in mysticism, and legends about various creepy creatures no longer seem something incredible. I suggest you look at other mythical creatures. Some of them could actually exist. Yorogumo The legend of Yorogumo originated during the Edo period in Japan in the early 17th to mid-19th century. It's a spooky spider ghost capable of transforming into a beautiful woman. In most legends, Yorogumo seduces men, lures them to his home, an abandoned cabin in the woods, plays a Japanese lute, then wraps them in nets of spider web and devours or leaves them in the web to be devoured by Yorogumo's offspring. It's believed that when the spider reaches the age of 400 years, he acquires magical powers. There's a similar character in another Asian country. A Philippine legend has it that Mananangal is a beautiful woman by day who at night turns into a vicious, scary, blood-drinking monster. In fact, Mananangal is a kind of Philippine vampire, but it's much scarier and more dangerous than Western vampires. Mananangal is said to be a hideous creature that splits in half at night, releases webbed wings from his shoulders like a bat, and flies off in search of victims, leaving the lower half standing on the ground. Mananangal uses his proboscis-like tongue to suck the blood of sleeping humans. Pregnant women and sick people are a favorite prey, and the creature can smell them from miles. You can kill Mananangal by pouring salt, crushed garlic, or ashes on his separated lower half. Even though the year is 2022, many Filipinos believe in this creature, fear it greatly, and keep plenty of salt at home in case this winged monster shows up in the middle of the night. Liko Liko is a terrible character of East Slavic mythology. It's an evil and frightening humanoid creature, which is distinguished by its tall stature and lean build. Like Cyclops, it has one eye, so it sees within a narrow range. It feeds on the flesh and suffering of humans and animals. It usually stays away from large settlements and spends most of its life in the woods, feeding on native animals and birds, which often angers the Leshy another character of Slavic mythology. But if Liko comes across a solitary person or a small group of people, it will not miss the chance. Having stuck to one person, it plunges them into despondency and begins to feed on their negative emotions, reminiscent of the Dementors from Harry Potter movies, isn't it? Expecto Patronum! Once it's fed on a person's suffering, Liko grows stronger. The more negative emotions the victim experienced initially, the stronger Liko will be. It's believed that once Liko has possessed a person, it's virtually impossible to get rid of it. It will follow the victim everywhere for the rest of their life, attacking those who will be near the victim. It may seem that J.K. Rowling was inspired by Liko when she created the Dementors. In fact, though, that's not true. 
According to the writer, she invented Dementors when she was going through a severe depression. It was these memorable characters that became the embodiment of longing and grief. In this episode, there's another character that appeared in Harry Potter movies, and you know it well. It's the Basilisk. Apparently, when creating the huge snake from the Chamber of Secrets, Rowling was inspired by the Basilisk from myths and legends. The Basilisk is described in different ways in ancient sources, but usually it's a giant serpent or a rooster with a snake's tail. This creature can kill birds with its fiery breath, other animals with its hiss, and humans with its gaze. Legends say that the basilisk is born from a snake or toad egg, which was hatched by a rooster. By the way, the word basilisk is translated from ancient Greek as little king, so this creature is often called the serpent king. Interestingly, during the Middle Ages, the basilisk was blamed for plague epidemics and mysterious murders. Okay, many of you probably knew about the mythical basilisk, but what about the Vouvre? You ever heard of it? In the meantime, it's another creepy snake of myths and legends. The Vouvre is the king or queen of snakes. In the forehead of this creature is a sparkling stone, a bright red ruby, and its appearance resembles a fiery serpent, the guardian of underground treasures. The Vouvre can only be seen once a year when it goes out to drink and fish in lakes or rivers. At that moment, it leaves its jewel on the shore. It's believed that whoever manages to get hold of the ruby of this creepy snake will become fabulously rich and receive a portion of the underground treasures that the Vouvre guards. Kelpie When we talk about Scottish mysteries and legendary creatures, first of all, we think of the Loch Ness Monster, although it can be called legendary only hardly because it's more likely a cryptid like Bigfoot or Chupacabra, but Kelpie is quite a mythical creature. It's a Scottish spirit which, like Nessie, lives in the water. It's believed that it can be found in many rivers and lakes. Although mythology says that sometimes Kelpie can take human form, most of the time it appears as a horse, a very scary horse with two long horns on its head, which makes it look like a cross between a horse and a bull. Sometimes Kelpie's eyes light up or they're full of tears, and its gaze brings chills or attracts like a magnet. Kelpie's footprints are easy to recognize. Its hooves are placed backwards. To defeat a Kelpie, you must bait it with oats and slip a bridle over its head while casting a spell that will make it docile and helpless. Dubuk In Jewish mythology, it's believed that if a person was evil while alive, they'll become a Dubuk after death. A Dubuk is a frightening and evil spirit who cannot part with an earthly existence because of its crimes and seeks a living organism into which it can move. In essence, a Dubuk is a demon. This concept is closer to us. The reasons of occurrence of a Dubuk is that during their life, a person has committed exactly so many sins that they're not capable to be reborn, but they don't go to hell yet. And so their soul, terrorized by various evil spirits, is forced to seek refuge in the body of a living person. According to mythology, it's easier to give a Dubuk settlement to weakened people, but there have been cases when a Dubuk occupied the bodies of people known for their holiness. The evilness of a Dubuk lies not only in the fact that it takes control of another's body, but also in the fact that the person in whom a Dubuk moved suffers a significant physical disorder being unable to combine two spiritual essences in themselves. Dubuk, Kelpie, Liko, Mananaganal, and the other creepy characters from myths and legends I've told you about are merely fictional characters. They don't exist in reality, nor did they ever exist. But not all mythical beings can be said so. Some of them were quite real. Stay tuned. At the end of the episode, I'll tell you about three characters of myths and legends that actually existed. Unicorn. Let's start with the big guns. It would seem that the unicorn should be a mythical character. After all, where in nature can one find a horse with one horn sticking out of its forehead? Well, maybe there's no such horse, but there is definitely a creature with one horn. I'm talking about Elasmotherium, or the Siberian unicorn. This is an extinct genus of the rhino which inhabited the steppes of Eurasia during the Ice Age. As you can learn from the cave drawings, the distinctive long horn in the forehead was a feature of this ancient rhino. In addition, this rhino partially resembled a horse, 
so it's possible that it served as a prototype for the creation of the unicorn and its inclusion to folklore. I wonder if the horn of the Elasmotherium had magical properties, like the unicorn's horn. Cyclops Cyclops are no less famous mythical creatures. I've already mentioned them today, talking about the East Slavic Liko. These one-eyed creatures appeared in many legends and myths and even became one of the key archetypes of the legends. But were Cyclops really there? It's unlikely that there were many one-eyed people walking around the planet, but the prototype of Cyclops is quite obvious. According to one version, it's the skeleton of a dwarf elephant. The central nasal opening in the skull of such an elephant could be mistaken for a giant eye socket, which resulted in the myth of the existence of one-eyed creatures. By the way, dwarf elephants lived on the Mediterranean islands, which is why Cyclops are one of the central characters of Greek mythology. Kraken Release the Kraken! And finally, we'll visit the sea, where according to ancient legend, the Kraken lived. It was a huge creature with giant tentacles which attacked the ships, wrapped them, and sank them in the depths of the sea. But were the ships really sunk by the Kraken? Modern scientists agree that the Kraken, as it's depicted in myths and legend, did not exist. But its prototype is known. It's very likely that the ships were attacked by giant squids. They can grow to enormous sizes, reaching 8 to 18 meters in length and weighing half a ton. Scientists learned about these squids and described them only in the 19th century, so it's not surprising that until then, sailors had no idea what kind of giant clams pounced on their ships. That's why they came up with the Kraken. That's all, guys. Which character from myths and legends would you like to see in the real world? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.